Green Hell is a survival game where the player has to survive the harsh environment of the Amazonian rainforests. Green Hell focuses on PvE survival mechanics where the player, alone or in collaboration with others, tries to survive against the local wildlife and any potential diseases. With great base building, survival, and co-op mechanics, it is a great game to try. Lastly, the PvE is challenging enough to deal with that it makes up for the lack of PvP. If you're looking for a true experiment in how you'll survive the zombie apocalypse, State of Decay 2 might just be worth your time. Because in this game, you'll actually be tasked with handling a small community of people trying to survive the apocalypse, to the extent that you will govern their lives and decisions and help them grow, get the supplies they need, and yes, fight off the zombies. Your decisions will affect lives, so make sure you know who you are using, who you can truly trust in a fighting scenario, and when to pick up and go when the dangers are too much. How long you survive is literally up to you. I should reload. Project Zomboid has been in early access for over a decade now, and there's honestly no telling if it'll ever leave. That being said, the Indie Stone is continually updating and developing the game, and it's getting to a point where many fans are referring to the title as the best zombie survival game ever made. In Project Zomboid, you're dropped into another post-apocalyptic scenario, and your only task is to survive. With a horde of the undead on your tail, it's a little easier said than done in this sandbox simulation title, especially as you still have various survival needs to tend to. That's not all either, as there's weather to take into account too, which will present you with entirely new challenges. What makes Project Zomboid stand out among other zombie survival titles is the sheer attention to detail and how immersive this can make the game. The title recently peaked and found a much wider audience with the release of Build 41 and popularity among streamers, and it deserves it. There's something very special about Project Zomboid and the decade of dedication that the Indie Stone has put into it. If you like the idea of delving into the survival horror experience, but don't fancy being chased down by wailing cannibals like in the forest, Don't Starve is for you. This beautifully illustrated title, that is eerily reminiscent of Tim Burton's style, takes the form of a 2D top-down world that is packed with danger. As a survival game, the most important aspect of Don't Starve is surviving. This means you won't be concentrating on building your first base and fleeing from danger, but you'll be finding ways to actively face and overcome it instead. As a result, you'll find yourself crafting and using contraptions galore to keep enemies from harming you as you navigate this CPU world. Don't Star feels so whimsical, and this is through a combination of art and gameplay. You start with little to no knowledge of this fantastical but dangerous realm, and so much of the fun is derived from discovery and learning. Additionally, if gathering resources and fending off war pigs alone seems daunting, Don't Starve Together is the multiplayer version of the game and is arguably one of the best co-op games out there. In Subnautica, you're alone and lost, much like Don't Starve, but this underwater world is a lot more relaxing than other survival titles in this list. Subnautica is rather unique because of the environment it's set in, and the developer is consistently working alongside the community to craft one of the best exploration titles out there. From your submarine, you can explore the sea, which is more vibrant and lively than you'd expect. As you gather materials and resources while dealing with some incredible looking sea creature enemies, you'll eventually be able to leave your submarine and begin to build on the ocean floor. Before you know it, you could even end up with your very own Atlantis. As is the gripe with most survival games, you must look out for yourself before crafting. You'll need to keep topped up on food and water, 
but also oxygen. Subnautica is a survival game that isn't too demanding and is perfect for those of us who love some deep sea exploration. If you're looking for a survival game that offers something new and exciting, you'll definitely want to check out Ark Survival Evolved. You will start your adventure with absolutely nothing, and you'll need to quite literally punch trees and craft the bare necessities just to make it through the night. Those that can quickly establish a base and craft weapons to defend themselves will find a world teeming with possibilities and dinosaurs. That's right, Ark lets you hunt and tame dinosaurs, which you can then turn into your own personal pack mules. Ark is also unique in the sense that you'll go from a primitive tool using cave person to a full-blown armored gun-wielding T-Rex rider over the course of your adventure. Don't let the simplistic design of RimWorld fool you, this is a survival title that'll keep you entertained for as long as you let it. Arguably, RuneWorld focuses a lot more on narrative than survival itself, but it still makes for a totally unique experience every single time. If you're not familiar with RimWorld, this indie gem places you in a procedurally generated alien world, and it's down to you to oversee the colony living there. There's also an AI narrator who'll regularly spice things up, and they can make your experience as easy or as difficult as they'd like. This means that as you expand your base, anything could happen, the attack of aliens, the outbreak of disease, and more, all completely at the peril of the narrator. It doesn't stop there either, as every colony you create can be wildly different. There are different scenarios and narrators to choose from for each run, and if you fancy it, there's a breadth of mods out there to spice up this nifty management title further. You'll never know what turn the game will take next, you just need to be prepared to keep your colony alive. The world of Valheim is procedurally generated with all the systems needed to craft one impressive beginner's base. You can craft to your heart's content, cook away, and team up with friends for the adventure. It's arguably multiplayer where Valheim truly shines, making those troubling boss fights and constructing sturdy bases a team effort. Another aspect of Valheim that draws me to it whenever I think of the survival experience is the story. You're not merely thrown into a world with nothing to your name, as is the case with other survival titles, but instead, you're a legendary warrior who has had their soul transported to Valheim. Your enemies are also Odin's enemies, and it's your job to restore peace to Valheim. This makes your survival experience have an overarching sense of purpose, and it feels great! Shrunk down to the size of an insect, you find yourself tiny and alone, wandering around a typical family garden. Given your size, what once was a small patch of grass now seems like the Amazon jungle, and obviously, a lot more danger awaits you than you'd first expect. Using the surrounding resources, like grass and dew, you must scramble to survive as predators seek you out. These predators include the likes of ants, birds, spiders, and more. As a microscopic version of your former self, Grounded grants you an entirely new perspective of taking a stroll around your garden and also hosts a new approach to the survival genre altogether. Minecraft, typically, revolves around starting with nothing and then destroying the surrounding terrain to gather and craft resources. You build your base, kill some animals for food, and then it's time to go down in the mines. Given the Minecraft Caves update recently, going down to the mines to hunt for diamonds and iron has never been more exciting. Your Minecraft experience is your own, so it's up to you if you invite friends, join public servers, or go slay the Ender Dragon solo. Either way, Minecraft is vibrant and developer Mojang simply keep adding more content. This content takes a long while to come out, but it's usually so worth it when it does. Think Minecraft, but as a 2D side-scrolling title with even more quality of life elements. 
That's Terraria. Admittedly, Minecraft has caught up in the quality department, but Terraria did it first and deserves to be recognized for doing so. Terraria also doesn't dry up as you plunge more hours into it, if anything, things get all the more wild, and it's a title that can be incredibly hard to put down. Your time surviving in Terraria is accompanied by a soundtrack that'll be stuck in your head for an eternity, and the title also hosts a lot of RPG elements that you often miss out in some survival games. You can befriend NPCs, defeat bosses, and play multiplayer with pals if you don't fancy exploring dungeons and villages solo. Below Zero is an underwater adventure game set on an alien ocean planet. This new chapter in the Subnautica universe was developed by Unknown Worlds. Dive into a brand new adventure in the freezing temperatures of the polar region of planet 4546b. Try to find out what happened to your sister using your own intelligence, except for a few useful tools. Altera hastily left here after an unexplained accident. Research facilities in the area were abandoned. What happened to the scientists who live and work here? The diaries, items, and data banks scattered all over the wreck shed light on the unknown aspects of the event. Using the limited resources you have, you must improvise and find a way to survive on your own. In the forest, you're a lone playing crash survivor who finds themselves on an island inhabited by some very hungry cannibalistic tribes, and later, mutants. While fending off hordes and trying to survive, you're also tasked with finding your lost son, Timmy. This means delving into a lot of treacherous caves and regularly putting yourself into terrifying and risky environments. The forest intertwines survival with horror and has a rather neat, optional narrative to embark on too. Like a lot of the survival games on this list, the forest truly shines when played alongside friends. Friends are also great for dealing with cannibals and mutants so that you don't have to, if you're able to convince them to take on the task. Rust is a fantastic game that's all about brutal, hardcore survival skills. On the other hand, you'll almost certainly come across some people in public servers that are merciless, making getting started a little difficult. Provided you avoid helicopters, wild animals, and don't let your first home disintegrate while you're AFK, you should be able to get a good start in Rust with these fundamentals. That is, up until you have the right resources to blast any menacing wild boar or nosy neighbor back to where they came from. Rust is all about building yourself up from nothing, and likely later losing it all in a PvP shootout, but that's part of the fun. Simply put, Rust is brutal, if you make a mistake, the title is often incredibly unforgiving, and that's exactly why people like it. Rust is one for those who have a little more time to commit to their survival experience, and fortunately for you, the game continues to evolve in terms of its community and grow in terms of its content. So, you've got plenty of exciting savagery to be getting up to. <laughs> Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey is a third-person open-world survival game where you explore, expand, and evolve to advance your clan to the next generation in this exhilarating adventure from Panache Digital Games. Embark on the most incredible odyssey known to humankind human evolution. Spanning from 10 million to 2 million years ago, begin your journey, before us, in Neo Gene period Africa. Explore a beautiful yet ruthless world, from swinging through tree branches in the jungle to stalking prey across the golden savanna grasslands. Decide what attributes to learn and hone in order to pass down knowledge to future generations, from crafting tools to enhancing invasive tactics against predators. Just like real life, Make sure to eat, drink, and sleep to stay alive and have the energy to face any danger that may come your way. Grow your clan and find strength in numbers as you progress through critical evolutionary stages of human evolution. 
your choices will write your clan story and determine if you can survive your evolution. Most medieval titles focus on knights or lords, but in medieval dynasty, it focuses on the common man. Or in this case, a common man in you. You are someone who has fled from the wars of the medieval world you live in and just want to try and build up your own home and community to try and live and live a peaceful life. You'll start out with nothing and learn skills over time as you grow, build, and expand what is yours. Grow a family, build a community, and expand to the lands all around you. Go on quests, explore the world itself, and survive to make your own dynasty. If players want a simple survival game with Stone Age tendencies but modern equipment, then Subsistence is the game. There are no supernatural threats here, just the usual human doubt and greed. Players must defend themselves against wildlife, nature, and AI hunters who also behave the same way as they do. It's a pure sandbox setup where players can even build their own communities and develop their mini communal civilizations. It's similar to Rust but with less wackiness and with more available modern technology. The game is also famed for its difficulty as it often tries to simulate real-world rules. Unreal World is a unique combination of roguelike role-playing game and survival simulation set in the far north long, long ago. Throughout the years, Unreal World has been praised for its depth, realism, atmosphere, and immersion. The game is completely open-ended and you decide whether you wish to lead a life of a fisherman, a hermit searching for the peace, a brave adventurer, a rough hunter, a trapper, or a tradesman. As a member of one of the nine different cultures, you'll enter a detailed and enchanting Iron Age game world in which northern folklore, knowledge, and way of life play an important part. The world and mechanics of the game are highly realistic, rich with historical atmosphere and emphasized on survival in the harsh ancient wilderness. One of the latest original entries for the Resident Evil franchise, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is a back-to-basics reimagining of zombie game formula. Instead of following up on the third-person action horror format of the previous games, Resident Evil 7 does everything more immersively in first person and makes the protagonist a lot more vulnerable. It does this by taking plenty of elements from horror movie classics such as the original The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and even The Blair Witch Project. This makes Resident Evil 7 an exciting new take on the franchise, one that's also a precedent for more innovative entries in the near future. Okay, now what? You probably expected this one already. The Last of Us, to this day, is one of the most phenomenal games ever and it's also one of the flagship exclusive titles of PlayStation back then. It simply ticks plenty of checkboxes for this list. The Last of Us follows the story of Joel and Ellie as they trudge through a post-apocalyptic United States after a mutant fungus outbreak turns everyone into a zombie. The amount of character drama, narrative twists, and feels here are simply unmatched by even the biggest survival titles or even other AAA games. Developer Naughty Dog simply outdid themselves with this game. Hey, asshole! Oh, man. One doesn't need to look far into fiction in order to find survival game inspirations. Our very own dark history of warfare has often given birth to real-life survival situations. This war of mine explores that dark notion in human history. The game takes place in a modern fictional war-torn Eastern European city where a group of civilians gets trapped during an ongoing siege. 
you must then manage their food, health, mental well-being, and resources so they can outlast the raging war. In short, it's a more depressing version of The Sims where instead of made-up problems, the civilians in this war of mine might actually die of real-life ordeals and aftermaths of war. This is one of the few survival games out there which fully captures the emotional and mental taxes of actual survival. Take it as a lesson in human suffering 101 and get ready to receive more psychological scars. Most survival games in this list make the actual act of surviving look fun and sterilized. In reality, it's often lonely, hopeless, and cold. After all, you're pretty much devoid of all the comforts you had and you simply can't build a new home just by smashing some trees together. The long dark understands that you can't have nice things realistically, so they don't hand it over to you like your Robinson Crusoe. Instead, the long dark makes you trudge through endless snow, ghost towns, and bleakness. The only other sentient life you'll find in droves are hungry wolves who are in the same circumstance as you are. Despite how desperate the situation is in the long dark, it still makes you feel like you're in a post-apocalypse or climate disaster movie, meaning you'll want more of it after getting a taste of what true survival feels like. The Flame and the Flood is a roguelike survival adventure game that follows a young girl named Scout who is traveling down a river after a flood destroys most of humanity. Being a roguelike survival game, players will want to aim for progressing through the game without dying, otherwise, they will lose precious equipment and valuables. However, there is a checkpoint system, so instead of starting completely over and attempting to regain resources, players can choose to start from a previous checkpoint. Few apocalypse survival sims manage to capture the actual intensity and desperation of trying to survive in a wasteland, that's why Frostpunk is a whole new world of pain and depression even for those used to apocalypse games. Frostpunk showcases the plight of the survivors of a climate apocalypse where the world is plunged into sub-zero temperatures, forcing most of life to die in the white void. You lead a community of survivors as they try to scavenge, rebuild, and sacrifice their way into preservation. Frostpunk introduces new survival mechanics never before utilized in any video game. By the end of a story playthrough, you'll be feeling the chill and the heartlessness of its wasteland. DayZ, one of the biggest open-world games, bears multiple similarities to Rust. From base building and open-world looting to intense PvP encounters and survival mechanics, DayZ is a great option for Rust fans, especially when considering that DayZ has some great mods available. The main difference is that DayZ's PvE is much more threatening due to the addition of zombies. If hardcore survival is what you're after, look no further than Conan Exiles. This sandbox survival game here is all about doing what you want and need to be a conqueror. You start off as a measly prisoner freed by Conan the Barbarian himself and you must then set out to explore the land and make something for yourself with what you can find. Once you're had your footing by killing animals over and over again until you're full or have enough of their skin for your armor, you can then turn to slavery. Yes, you can enslave non-player characters here and have them work for you after you've humiliated them by dragging their unconscious body on the ground. And once you're rich enough, you can perform ritual sacrifices to summon a god of your religion of choice, pretty much how our ancestors rolled. The ever-popular survival scenario that we regularly see across popular culture is the post-apocalyptic world full of zombies. This is what Seven Days to Die delivers, in a package that mechanically feels incredibly similar to Rust. 
If you like your survival experience to be gory, but not overwhelmingly scary, Seven Days to Die strikes a delicate balance between the two. It knows that it's a survival game at its core, so while hordes of zombies destroy the motel you turned into a home, you're not going to be in for too many jump scares. I say too many, because zombies appeared at windows and openings that I never knew existed, which led to a bit of a fright while crafting. Seven Days to Die, if you can ignore the poor graphics, is the perfect interactive zombie movie. You are the main character in this apocalypse, and you can recruit friends to help out too. As you all scramble to survive, it almost plays out like Zombieland, and honestly, Zombieland's rules are actually pretty helpful for surviving Seven Days to Die. No Man's Sky wasn't one of the best survival games of all time when it first launched. It would be years before the space exploration title felt like a fully-fledged game. Now, if you waited before playing or have yet to dabble with No Man's Sky, now is a better time than ever. No Man's Sky is the ultimate survival game for those who like to explore the vast expanse of space, upgrade their ships, and befriend aliens. It's entirely up to you if you wish to follow the main story of No Man's Sky, which is a hell of a lot more developed now than it used to be. However, at some point, you're free to go off roaming space all by yourself. There's a myriad of beautiful planets to explore and creatures to tame or fight, and surprises in No Man's Sky are just one flight away. For galaxy jumping and an entire universe at your fingertips, get yourself kicked out in No Man's Sky. Stranded Deep is an open-world survival game that starts with the player being stranded on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The game features great survival and base-building mechanics similar to Rust, which is combined with hunting wildlife, fighting bosses, and exploring the vast sea. Its main difference is that it only includes a co-op mode, and thus there is no PvP, where players can steal loot from others. Those looking for something a little different should definitely consider loading up Raft. This survival release pits players against the islands, forcing them to begin their journey adrift at sea. When things start, players will find themselves fighting for survival from a raft, which they can then use to help them navigate to nearby islands. It's an explorative release but still quite the survival game as players will need to outmaneuver man-eating sharks along their quest to survive. The best part is that Raft can be enjoyed solo or with a friend in an enthralling cooperative mode. One of the younger entries in this list, Days Gone is a compelling zombie horror survival game that makes good use of the open world format. Look past the controversial IGN and GameSpot score and you'll find a community of zombie game, veterans praising Days Gone for being a fresh take on an aging formula and sub-genre. Days Gone follows the story of Deacon St. John who tries to survive the wilderness of fictional Oregon amidst a zombie apocalypse, with the zombies being called Freakers while searching for his wife with whom he got separated a couple of years ago. Days Gone is one of the few games in this list that throws actual hordes of zombies, making it a blast to play. Come on! Come on! Moving on to the open world is Dying Light and its numerous downloadable contents and expansions. The game showcases a huge and sprawling city you can traverse vertically and horizontally in first-person parkour, and you certainly would need to if you want to avoid the ravenous zombie hordes on the city streets. You play as an undercover agent in a shady organization committed to fixing the zombie infestation in the city of Heron. If you find the daylight zombie hordes and human bandits wanting, simply go out at night and dying light will show you why it's a bad idea to be alone with zombies once the sun comes down. Regardless, it's a good enough game if you're after casual survival where you don't need to fulfill a checklist of your character's needs. <laughs> When it first came out, the original Outlast was generally praised for its interesting take on the haunted house horror template. 
In this game, you're a journalist with no tool or weapon other than a camcorder with limited battery life and subpar infrared, you're basically a sitting duck. The worst part is that the insane asylum you just entered is full of monstrosities and many other murderous entities that like to lurk in the dark and chase anyone who looks like a normal human being. All of this happens in first-person view and you'll find yourself abusing your camcorder's infrared like a safety blanket. Tribes of Midgard, it is a co-op game that uniquely blends action, survival, and roguelike elements. Players must protect their village from invading hordes, deadly spirits, and colossal monsters who want to destroy the sacred tree Yggdrasil seed, which they have sworn to protect. Only by protecting the seed can you and your tribe stop Ragnarok, the end of the world. Embark on an adventure with your tribe through the wilderness of Midgard to gather precious resources, hunt mythical beasts, defeat mighty foes, smash giants, and obtain treasures. The farther you get from the village, the greater the challenge and the rewards, you will have to confront the ever-growing minions of the apocalypse. But you must return before sunset so you can bolster your defenses, craft powerful equipment, and fend off night attacks. If you're craving for something more hardcore than a Souls-like game, particularly in the running around helpless aspect of gameplay, then Outward ought to be your masochist sanctuary. It's a medieval fantasy RPG with no mini-map, no fast travel, and no readily available modern means of video game healing. Outward pits you against its cruel world where you'll feel lonelier than ever as you journey through the land on your own arm mostly with only your wits and measly tools or spells. It's a game that treats you like an expendable NPC, not as a chosen one or protagonist. It might not be for everyone, but Death Stranding is revolutionary in its own way. This game is Hideo Kojima's latest innovation which makes use of multiplayer in ways no other game has gone before. The core gameplay, for that matter, is best enjoyed online. That loop involves delivering packages like the world's most dedicated and impractical FedEx delivery guy. What makes Death Stranding work more as a survival title than an action-adventure one is how the packages tend to handicap the players whereupon they have to think up creative or resourceful ways to avoid combat and complete their delivery. Combat is sparse and unconventional, meaning you have to rely on grit most of the time. The Alien franchise has been getting disaster after disaster of video games with the most notorious title being Aliens, Colonial Marines. It wasn't until Creative Assembly's Alien, Isolation that the franchise showed its potential for horror and atmosphere once again, proving that Xenomorphs are just as scary in video games as they are in the films. Alien Isolation is all about Amanda Ripley's journey to find her missing mother, Ellen Ripley, the protagonist of the first Alien movie. Ironically, Amanda somehow underwent the same ordeal as her mother did, having to fend for herself and survive the xenomorphs as they wreak havoc in space and many other human establishments. If you want to know what it feels like to be scared livestock, this is the game for you. Dead Island Definitive Edition is the best version of a game that was supposed to get a sequel, and yet never did for some reason. We'll add that to the mysteries of the gaming universe. Anyway, in the title you go on vacation at an island getaway, except, when you wake up after a rest, the island is now full of zombies, so, good luck with that. Seriously though, you have to get off the island, and with escape being your only way forward, you'll need to kill the zombies who try and stop you. You can play the title alone or with a co-op partner, whatever it takes for you to get off the island alive. Fuck you!